up on today's show. A new HIV drug trial. The drug, called a PEP, is already being used up to 72 hours after possible contact with HIV, but the trial will include using it for up to a month. James Martins at Media City. And one of our reporters takes flight. Good afternoon, I'm Matt Tate. And I'm Sophie Whitfield. A groundbreaking new trial in Manchester has been launched to prevent people from catching HIV. Penny James reports. The Manchester Centre for Sexual Health are conducting a medical research trial into an anti-HIV drug. The aim is to prevent HIV and it is being trialled on gay men in Manchester. This study is looking at a new way to reduce the risk of getting HIV. It will look at the impact of taking PEP on how often men have sex, how often they use condoms and whether they get other sexually transmitted infections. The drug, called a PEP, is already being used up to 72 hours after possible contact with HIV, but the trial will include using it for up to a month. PEP has the potential to prevent new infections among some of the men who are most at risk of acquiring HIV. At the minute, side effects include debilitating, vomiting and diarrhoea, so the drug isn't that widely used. My best advice is please use a condom. Yes, if you take the tablet, it might give you up to 80% protection. It might not. It depends how your body reacts with it as well. Everyone's different. Um, so I'd say be careful using the tablets right now and going unprotected. It's, it's not, it's not a, a cure. It's not, a, it's not an answer. Still use a condom because you, you can still get it. You've still got a chance of getting it. Yeah. I think it's a positive thing. I mean, any sort of negative opinions around that, the whole issue, I think um, things like this are sort of promoting a, that there can, there can be a change and um, also putting it in a positive light. That could be something that can be de dealt with rather than keeping it as like a really foreign, foreign problem. So do you it could be a groundbreaking step towards preventing HIV and it will certainly help tackle the stigma attached to the disease. This is Penny James reporting for Keys TV News. An elderly couple have died in a house fire at the home in Swinton. Mary Dunn and her husband Ken were found dead in the downstairs bedroom of their house on Temple Drive. Despite no visual damage outside the property, it is believed that smoke had smouldered for some hours before the alarm was raised at 2.15pm. The fire is suspected to have begun in the kitchen and an investigation is now going on. Nearly 30 miles of Manchester roads are going to be gritted with less salt this winter in a bid to save £25,000. This would mean many roads in local communities will not be treated as soon as bad weather hits, instead only being gritted in exceptional conditions such as after three days of heavy snow. The Police and Crime Commissioner Tony Lloyd has been meeting with students at the University of Salford to discuss plans to create a more ethical framework within the police force. Mr Lloyd is working with the Chief Constable Sir Peter Fahey to create a new complaints process which he hopes will restore trust in the Greater Manchester Police Force. He aims to remove this negative stigma of Greater Manchester and feels that working together is the key to success. And now, over to Kate with all the latest entertainment news. So, you've got something Christmassy for us today? I know, yeah, it seems a little bit early to be Just talking a bit, about, okay. about Christmas, <laughs> but there is, there's loads going on, all the shops have got stuff up and everything, so I think it's in fitting. Fab. First in entertainment then is James Arthur who will be headlining the Christmas light switch on in Manchester which has sparked great excitement with you on Twitter. Amy Sterling has tweeted saying, just had the best text in the world, made my week, hashtag James Arthur, hashtag Christmas lights. And joining Amy in her excitement is Rebecca Wilson writing, as if James Arthur is turning the Christmas lights on in Manchester and performing, need to book this off work. Also causing excitement was celebrity chef James Martin, who visited Media City UK to sign copies of his latest book, Fast Cooking. The book provides 20-minute recipes which cover a range of worldwide dishes which James has picked up whilst on his travels. The book itself follows on from uh, last year's book we did, Slow Cooking. Um, this one's slightly different, this is faster. Um, so the idea behind it, each recipe should be done in about 20 minutes. No real set time to it, but it's, um, 
something that people do. If you chop slow, it's going to take you a little bit longer than 20 minutes. But it's the whole ethos behind it is that it follows on from uh, last year's work. Thousands of gamers from the Northwest attended the Play Expo at the weekend, where they enjoyed classics such as Pac Man and Donkey Kong. However, creating great excitement was the new exhibition of the new PlayStation 4. Craig Carroll reports. Thousands of people descended upon Event City for the fourth annual Play Expo, and the second one to be held within Manchester. Really, when it started in Blackpool a couple of years back, and there was only a few thousand there. To, to this is ridiculous. It's like, well, I brought, I went the first one, and it was in a small hotel, and within four years, it's turned into like tens of thousands of people practically turning up for it. It's, it's brilliant. The expo looks to celebrate all that is good about gaming, past, present, and future. You get to show machines that, like, other generations have never seen it live before. The fathers have told them what they grew up playing with, and some of the young kids are coming, and they actually sit on the machine and get really enjoy a lot of enjoyment, immediate enjoyment out of it. And it's amazing to see the look on the faces of some of the young kids. First it's, this is horrible, this is rubbish, it's nasty. Ten minutes later it's, can I have another go? What I enjoyed is most is uh, meeting up with friends. Cause Apologies for the technical difficulties on that one. You can find more on keysnews.net. Now joining me in the studio is our film critic, Will. So what do we have going on this week, Will? Well, the first film we're going to talk about today is The Fifth Estate, which tells the true story of the growth and birth of WikiLeaks, with Benedict Cumberbatch playing the founder, Julian Assange. And uh, it seems like the most topical based on a true story film this year, because um, we are living in an age of ever-changing technology and communication, which makes it all the more disappointing that The Fifth Estate plays more like a basic Wikipedia plot synopsis as, as opposed to an actual character study or film. It seems more of a showcase of Benedict Cumberbatch's admirable talent, but we already know that he's a great actor and the film doesn't really have that much else, unfortunately. Oh, that one sounds interesting. And what about <laughs> anything else going on? Well, we've got the, um, next, the latest DreamWorks movie, Turbo, a 3D animated movie about a snail who wants to race in Formula One after getting super speed powers. <laughs> it is um, unashamedly a cartoon and that runs on cartoon logic and it's and it's so captivating in that regard and it goes full full pelt in that regard that it's, it's hard not to watch. I'd love to go and see that one. <laughs> and to in Thanks for joining me Will and to end entertainment did you know that this week is National Chocolate Week? Chocolatiers all around the UK are busy celebrating by preparing chocolate treats for all to enjoy. The UK are mad on chocolate and figures show that the industry on average is worth three and a half billion pounds. So what is it that we all love so much about this tasty treat? Um, I do make a pretty mean uh, chocolate cheesecake. I like these um, chocolate shells like melted on top of biscuits, that's good. Oh, that is so good. good. We both love Nutella, don't we? Yeah, we we cut a banana and we put a big spoon of Nutella and we mix it. That's all for entertainment. Back to you, Sophie. Thanks, Kate. Now don't forget to log on to keysnews.net to keep up with all the latest entertainment. Now, Manchester finds itself firmly in the spotlight again, following findings that suggest the city is the most vibrant in the UK. Abby Robinson reports. Manchester is the United Kingdom's most vibrant city, climbing 20 places from 2001 to reach the summit of the Inner City Vibrancy Report. We spoke to an inner city estate agent and residents to find out more. I think the whole city living phenomenon, really, has... Um, really exploded so amenities not only sort of nightlife but you know dentists and doctors and things like that means living in the city centre is convenient for work and studying but also has all the fringe benefits of living in the suburbs. I think Manchester is a great place to be, it's got everything you need, it's got the lifestyle, it's got the good standard of living, low unemployment, it's a really good place to be outside of London. <laughs> so many different people, so many different cultures and they all get along together and it's just a great vibe and a great place to be. The study is an important step in acknowledging the city. And joining us in the studio now it's Jess Foley with all the latest sport news. Jess, 
big question, I suppose, is did you watch the England game on Tuesday? I absolutely did, and I was really, really proud. Who was your man of the match for the game? Well, I've got to say, there was actually a few for once, which is kind of a nice thing for England, but being a Tottenham fan myself, I've got to say Andros Townsend, really. Well, I agree, but I'm a Man City fan, and I reckon Wayne Rooney was the best guy for me. All pretty impressive, though. They were, were going to pretty win it? impressive. Now, talking of the match, England boss Roy Hodgson says his team are angry that their World Cup qualification has been overshadowed by the outrage surrounding a joke he made in the dressing room during Tuesday's game against Poland. Wayne Rooney tweeted, Seen the story on Roy this morning. He's done nothing wrong. This is ridiculous. Rugby League World Cup hosts England face underdogs Italy in a friendly this Saturday at Salford's AJ Bell Stadium. Matt McKenzie reports. We're at the uh, AJ Bell Stadium in advance of Saturday's Italy versus England rugby league friendly. We had a word with press relations officer Paul Hyten to find out what's going on. They'll raise the game. They're, uh, you know, they've got some, they've got some very experienced players from the NRL um, as well as some players from over here. So they, it's not as though these guys have come from from nowhere. Um, they've definitely got some pedigree. These guys are the ultimate professionals. You, know, you, you mentioned Minicello there. He's been at the top of his game for a long, long time and. Um, these are the type of arenas that they, those players want to play in. They're on a world stage. They've got they've got their own personal pride to uh, to play for. Um, and, you know these guys. There's no doubt about it. I, I know the Italian coach quite well, and he'll have these guys quite quite revved up, and they'll be playing for the passion of the shirt and what it means to them. Matt McKenzie, Keys TV News. Three Salford swimmers have been chosen to compete in international games later this year. Craig Carroll has more. Chosen for international honours. This will see them compete in games all across the world as Britain looks towards its next set of champions. Uh, when I got picked, I was really excited uh, about the experience, about competing abroad. Uh, I've never been to Brazil before, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's like, uh, especially competing against world talent as well, seeing where I actually am ranked in the world. Really big shock to find out. I didn't um, expect it. It was a really big surprise, and I really got on with all, all the other teammates. It was a really good experience. So I was really excited about it. Um, it was uh, really exciting to find out I've been selected. Uh, well, as a swimmer, the amount of hours you have to put in swimming, uh, you swim in at least eight times a week with one sessions in between that. Uh, trying to swim and do college is a very tough task, so it's a lot of commitment and uh, a lot of dedication has to go into it. Uh, we have a great programme here in Salford and it's, um, again it's, it's good news that three of our athletes are representing international teams and over the last 12 years in particular we've had 20 of our swimmers who've come through the programme and gone on to achieve international honours representing Great Britain or England. The sport back to you, Matt. Thanks, Jess. And don't forget, you can keep up to all with up, up to date with all the local sport on keysnews.net. Now, finally, how far would you go to raise money for your favourite charity? Here is Amelia Menicheva with the answers. Southward Keys welcomed a unique charity event which attracted hundreds of people from all over the country. Adrenaline lovers were given the chance to cross the boundary between Southport and Manchester in the open air. The Imperial War Museum is raising vital funds for the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital in a very special way. They're having a 250 meter long charity zip slide from the top of the museum to the Lowry. Participants enjoyed the thrilling zip wire across the Manchester Ship Canal at a height of 30 meters. This was the third zip slide event to take place in the museum. Alex Knight explained what makes it so special. The people that, that take part make it quite special. So one of our volunteers um, called Frank Tolley, who is a, um, a, a veteran from the RAF, um, so sort of fought, fought for the country during the, during the Second World War, um, and now he's 92 and he was, took part this weekend in the zip side. Um, he's the oldest person, as far as we know, to ever, to ever zip across the Keys. Uh, but yeah, a, a remarkable sort of character, and it's, it's stories like that, really, that, that make it so, so interesting. Former footballer Jamie Carragher also took part in this adrenaline field challenge. Some of the more eccentric characters came out to encourage more people to take part in the fundraising. Let's see how scary the zip wire across Salford Key. That's all from us here at Keys News. Goodbye.
Goodbye.